Good evening. My name is Ron Byers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I'll let uh, know a little bit about me uh, to start. I was born in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Grew up there. Uh, went to uh, raised uh, Catholic at, in Pittsburgh, Shadyside area. And uh, mother and father, and I have four siblings. I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have older sister, older brother, younger sister, younger brother. So I was right in the middle. And <clears throat> growing up, I always had a, like a, a, a feeling that I always wanted to do something for God. And uh, it, I didn't know why or how come, but I always had that. And like on a, a Saturday when I was in grade school, I would get up and go to 6 o'clock church. And the church was only a few blocks up the street from where I lived. But I would get up knowing that I could sleep in, but I thought that that was a thing that I could do for God. And as I grew up, and uh, I guess it's like all young, you feel that you are uh, one of the brightest on earth. So uh, I just, as I got older and older through high school, things were, I always had to work hard for whatever I got. But I was very thankful that what I did have, and I had very loving parents, uh, very strict parents, <clears throat> and uh, so it was, as I got out of high school, working around, <clears throat> and uh, I was drafted into the service, so while when I got drafted, I had a choice to go to Canada because the Vietnam War was just, you know, it was in the mix. So I decided to just go to the service and do my two years and return home. So things while I was in the service, uh, it was amazing that Growing up, things that happened to our family, uh, my older sister had a brain operation, and as a youngster, I could always remember my mother saying, Jesus will get me through this. So it's, it's sort of like a, I heard that over and over again on different things that happened. And... Some of them were very, very difficult on my parents. And, uh, but my mother would always say that Jesus is going to get me through these things that are, that are happening. So when I went to service, and I know undoubtedly my mother was praying for me. So while I was in the service, it was sort of like I was on a march one time and my drill instructor came up beside me and asked me, do I like the army? And I answered him with a straight face and said, nothing against you, Sergeant, but I could think of 5,892 places I'd rather be than here marching, talking to you. But this man's army has me for two years, and while I'm here, I'm going to put a two best years that I can in this service. And he looked at me and he says, I like your attitude. So it was, it was the way I was raised. 
work hard and good things will happen. So during that time in the service, sure enough, I was shipped over to Vietnam. And while I was there, it was uh, obviously to say it nobody likes war. So different times while I was there, the work what I did, I was with 267 Signal Company, and we went all over Vietnam, burying cable, laying telephone lines, and, and all the construction part of communications. And we were some very hot spots and some very nice spots. But anyway, the, as I, from a just regular person on a squad, they saw my ability, and I'm very thankful that all of a sudden, one day, I was a squad leader, and I had 15 guys that in my squad that I had to look after. So it was all things that, that, that I was doing, and I know for a fact that I had a praying mother looking after me. So at that point, time in my life it wasn't that God was first in my life I think I was first <clears throat> so just as <coughs> excuse me as time went on uh, there were some amazing things that happened while I was there and <clears throat> I look back and, and I'll say that I have no idea on certain things that happened, N none, and I'm just thankful they did, but uh, <clears throat> when I got home, uh, I just took it easy, did di different things, and my mother introduced me she had a real estate office in East Liberty at that time, right outside of Shadyside, Pittsburgh. And next door neighbor <coughs> was a camera shop. And she got to know the young lady there. Well, she introduced me to this lady, young lady, when I came home. And <coughs> it, was, it was a neat thing that my mom introduced me to this young lady, which in time I started dating. And <clears throat> I can remember going to Sacred Heart Church and asking the Lord to marry that woman. And I really, truly in my heart did not know Jesus Christ. I have not <clears throat> yet accepted him as Lord and Savior. So it was just a working in my life that we eventually did get married. We got married on Halloween, October 1971, and then October 1972, she passed away. And that really got me thinking, what in the world is going on? So I started searching. I went into different religions. Just I went to Duquesne University in, in uh, Pittsburgh and took astrology. And it was, uh, I know that God has a tremendous sense of humor. And I could almost see him just sitting up there and saying to St. Peter, would you look at what that boy has got himself into right now? Send a few angels down to straighten him up. I, I can just almost visualize that. So in my search, 
my brother-in-law, which lived at my house at one time, he became a Christian, and all he did was read the Bible. And he just kept saying to me over and over again, give your life to the Lord. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I told him I had years and years of Catholic grade school, everything, and I know there has to be another way. So it took me two years of searching. And one day in my own backyard, I got down on my knees in my backyard and I said, Lord, you know me, you know my heart. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. And I was very aware of what I was saying. Come into my life and be Lord and Savior of me. And I started from that day on. There was no bells, rockets, choir music, anything. But I know I had peace in my heart, soul, that I knew the words that I heard. And about six months later, I, well, from that day on, I started reading the Bible. About six months later, I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the words that I heard in my backyard. It was about love. And I, to this day, nobody is going to tell me that the Lord did not speak to me in my backyard. So getting back to my searching, I started reading and reading and reading and just growing in the Lord. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 47. And those verses in there, it tells you about astrology, witchcraft, all of them. And I would suggest if you have any doubts about that, read Isaiah 47, verse 10 to 15. And it's, it, I kept growing and growing, and the Lord led me to California. I let my brother live in my house with his daughter, packed my truck, and went to California. Wound up managing a motel in California, which I'd never done. And believe me, I was asking the Lord for help all the time because I never had that. I was a tree surgeon working for Davy Tree Company for five and a half years before I went to California. So it was a, <clears throat> this was totally a new experience to me. So it was a, a growing to be patient and trust in the Lord, for he knows best. He created me, and he knows my likes and dislikes. So as I grew in the Word, things around me just started happening. I put an application on the railroad. And at one time they said that one of the conductors, what well, to back up a few steps, this motel was in Fresno, California. And the people from Richmond, the Bay Area, trainmen and engineers would come down to Fresno, get off the train, and come to this motel that I'm working. And <clears throat> I'm managing this motel, and they all said that at one time they could take me down to the superintendent and said, this is a good man, hire him. And they would hire me. But he said, they have a hiring committee now, so we can't do that anymore. And the hiring committee was a 
five people. <clears throat> so I put my application in. Well, in the period of time when I did that, the owner of the motel was coming out with a new platform on managers for the motel, and he was going to send his uh, assistant to him. Him and his wife were going to take over the motel I was in, and I, I was only there six months. But I knew that God didn't send me to California for a six-month journey and go home. I, knew, I just had a presence that he was going to keep me there. <clears throat> so as time went on, I got hired on the railroad, and I had to go to the Bay Area. So I had to move from Fresno to the Bay Area, put my application in for engine service, became an engineer. It took another year. I hired out in the railroad in 1976, and everything, I became a Christian in 1975, so everything that, that I'm doing is just totally by being, listening, and being obedient to the Lord. So God knows exactly what you need to be happy. So as time went on, I became an engineer and a very, very excellent job. And uh, we, the experience I had on the railroad was tremendous. My dad worked on the railroad, the Pennsylvania Railroad. <clears throat> I used to go to work with him as a youngster, and he was a yard master. And I thought he owned the railroad, the way everybody would come in and, you know, get work from my dad. So <clears throat> when I got out of high school, I asked my dad, can you get me a job on the railroad? And he told me, you don't want to work on the railroad. So I just said, okay, you know, went about my own way. But as time went on, different things happened, and I wound up in California on the railroad. And he even said God works in strange ways. So it was a tremendous experience, and I got to know hundreds of people were just being obedient to the Lord and serving him, the blessings would just come. And it wasn't, and I know it wasn't me doing something. It was him. He had everything laid out for me way back when I was unaware of his existence. So it, it is, I put God in everything that I do and I say. So it's something that <clears throat> when I'm on the street meeting people, I'm very aware that God's right there. So it, for me, it is being a very aware in of his existence and everything. And I had a class, and it says experiencing God. And that to me, a lot of people say, well, how do you know it's God? How do you know who is talking to you? 
And I go back to the thought process that you do not create thoughts. They come from out to inner. Your center of consciousness is your soul. Now, whatever you want to call Satan, the devil, and God, they both can speak to you. What you learn as becoming a Christian is God's still, soft voice when he speaks to you. And the, I guess the easiest way I could say, when you get a thought to throw a rock at somebody's window in their house, it's easy for you to say, well, that's not right. So that thought came from Satan. But it, when God speaks to you, it will always, no matter if you can understand or not, it would always be for the good. So it's a, when you're committed to serving the Lord, it's, he says in scripture, even if you veer off the path that he wants you to be on, he will bring you back to that path, knowing that all you want to do is serve him. So the commitment is everything that you do, you think, pertains to God. It's, it's what I think a lot of evangelists just want to be known as a godly person. And that, to me, is one of the greatest comments that you could ever have. If somebody says to you that, I know you're a godly person. Working on the railroad, I worked with all different types of men, women, everything. And a lot of times, they would say different things on the engine, we could be going, and they would say, oh, I'm sorry, Ron. Well, I'm not one to tell you how to speak and what to say. But they would know just by being who I am, the way I conduct myself, that's like not me, that is speaking out of line if they would use some foul language or anything. And, and it wasn't that I never said to the people, I don't want you to swear in my engine. It was just an unforeseen or said thing that they knew that I don't. And they knew that it was out of place for them. So when you're just gradually, once you become a Christian, God knows and has a plan for you. And you can't go around beating people over the head with the Bible. I always said that if I had a wand, that all I had to do is go around and just touch people with it, that they would know Jesus and accept him. That's all I would ever do the rest of my life. But you can't do that. It comes with commitment, understanding, and as you grow with the Lord, he gives you words that you can speak people because he knows what they need so if he puts you in a place with an ungodly person you could thank him for that because you may wind up keeping him out of hell for eternal eternally 
so it, it's, it's a, an amazing journey as you go along in learning, studying the Word of God, and just growing. Commitment and believing, give your all to Him. You cannot outgive God. That that is a just a a fact that I know I can't, and I don't know anybody that actually can. So it's it's a tremendous, challenging, exciting life to live for Jesus. So it's it's. I just recently was talking to a fellow, and he came up with, well, I know different churches and that, and he made a statement like he knows that the man is the head of the household. And I said, well, do you know what that means? And he says, well, in a way, you know, you're the decision maker. I said, well, not exactly. Where it talks about being head of the household, the man, main purpose and job is to make sure the wife and the children spiritually are taught scripture and become Christians and serve in Jesus. That is the main purpose where it says he is the head of the household. When you have children, you're to teach the children. And it's not a type of thing that you're a head of the household if you want to buy a car and your dear wife says, well, wait a minute, you want to buy a Ford and I want to buy a Chevy. It's not, well, I'm the head of the high school, we're going to buy a Chevy. That, you pray about it. And it says in scriptures to love your wife and honor her just as Jesus loves you. So in Ephesians, uh, it, it states a lot of that. And <clears throat> I would have to get to the... the uh, The chapter where it speaks on loving the husband and the wife. And I believe it's chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 19 to 33. And explains everything. So it's a it's a very nobody is boss. You're both working together. So it's a new and amazing journey between the two of you, how you can grow in the Lord and your children will see the love that God has given both of you to each other and it will reflect on them so it's it's sort of like a a total living experience as you every day live for the lord so it's a sometimes everything is not rosy. Believe me, there are times, trials, tribulations that you, you're going to go through, but it's just like my mother when she was going through different things. She said, Jesus, I know Jesus will get me through. 
He will never abandon you. You will have that comfort knowing that he's there. He is there. So no matter what happens, the things that I have are all material. He has blessed me with a lot. If ever he wants them back, they're his. I have no complaint if he takes them back. None. He gave me those blessings for a time. So it's I look at that as in life. He gives me every day, and I praise him for that. In my prayers at night, I thank him for the things that I had no awareness of his protection during the day. And I can give you a real uh, story that I it happened to me. I was on the engine pulling out a big cut of cars and there was a switch was lined for the main line. And as I'm coming back, I had four engines behind me. I was pulling these cars out. And I just heard the word of the Lord saying, the switch is lined for the main line. And I hit the brakes, hung out the window of the engine, and saw the switch was lined for the main line. I stopped short about 50 feet from going out onto the main line, and Amtrak whoop, goes by. I know we would have collided with Amtrak. And those people on that train had no idea how God protected them that day. I am very thankful that when I heard the voice of the Lord stating that, I reacted and stopped. So, when I pray and thank him for the things that I had no knowledge of, his protection, every day, I think we can all do that. So it is something that we could look forward to, his protection, his guidance, his love. He wants us to be as happy and prosperous as we could possibly be. And I can't think of any other way that we can achieve that is by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life and walk with him hand in hand. And in time, where it says, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. They are the truest words you'll, you'll ever read. So it's, it is just a tremendous, tremendous experience that there is a many, many, many times that I could go on how I experience the word of the Lord in my life. And I am no exception. I am just a person who wants to serve Jesus to the fullest. So I am nobody special. I am just another brother in the Lord that it just goes beyond statement 
I love the Lord. I will do anything for him. So it's just he knows my likes, dislikes, habits, good, bad, everything. He knows me, and he knows you. So it is, to me, the greatest thing in the world is to serve him. And sometimes he'll ask of you, and you have no knowledge why, how come. And maybe years down the road, you might get and see that answer on why. And sometimes it comes to you right away. But there's a, a little thing that, that I always say that I know everybody gets them. You will get a thought to call Mary or Sam or Tony. You'll just get that thought. And you'll say, oh, I'll do it when I get home. And you forget about it. And all of a sudden, a couple days later, Tony might call you and say, oh, my word, I had a flat tire and I need some help. And you go, oh, my. I got an, a thought to call you, and I didn't. So it's, it's things like that. It's not that, you know, God's going to punish you for not listening. But when you get thoughts and they're godly, I have cut my mistakes down from probably 20,000 a day to maybe 500 over the years that I'm trying to be obedient and I'm constantly still growing. And I will grow to the day, I guess, I pass on and be with him. So it was a, just a special knowing that I want to serve the Lord every day of my life to the fullest. And my sister-in-law, one of her daughters died. And I called her up and was talking with her. And her words to me, she said, Ron, I have no idea and don't know how anybody could go through losing a daughter or son and not knowing Jesus Christ. Because I'm hurting but I know my daughter is with the Lord. And that's the most comforting thing that I know. But if you, the people that don't know that, she said, I don't know really how they get through it. So it's a, it is a, total life giving the more you give to the understanding and want to know Jesus and it, it's a, a commitment to live for him so the, the commitment is you're giving everything to him you're not holding back anything. Everything. He wants all of you. And I know it took time to understand that. And I'm not saying if you become a born-again Christian today that you will understand everything tomorrow. It will take time. He has a plan for you. So just be diligent in your faith.
faithfulness to the Word of God and carry on every day with that in mind. So I just... Uh, We'll pray for everybody and uh, hope that everybody that hears this word tonight and this book right here, The Basic Truths by Larry Kragler. I believe I said his name correctly. Is a tremendous, tremendous book to read. Excellent. So, uh, to the next time, I think it'll be uh, three weeks. Uh, God bless everybody. And I hope you all come to know and serve Jesus totally. <laughs>